According to data from YouTube, only a fraction of the people watching these videos are subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, subscribe. You can always unsubscribe at a later date. About an hour later, we all had small travel bags packed with clothes, phone chargers, toothbrushes, and we're on our way to Gay Jake's. Gay Jake lived on the outside of town in his own house, and thanks to his parents, had more money than God. It also happened that his best friend Lita was staying there while she was in town. This was super lucky because she likes hunts and used to hunt poachers or something like that. Anyway, she's supposed to have killed more men than malaria. And whilst Milo and Tegan are getting their shit together, I think we'd all be pretty safe around her, should something go down at the house. Milo and Tegan ended up riding with me and Jasmine in the back seat. About halfway there, Tegan asked, So you think that we can trust this gay Jake with our secrets and to keep them safe? Jasmine answered, Oh yeah, totally. Gay Jake is keeping secrets about half the people in the state from the other half of them. He's one of the nicest people in the world, too. I don't think he's ever not helped someone when they need it. But he does have a really fruity southern accent, so please don't make fun of him. Are you serious? Milo screeched from the back seat. He's rich, super nice, has dirt on everyone, has a super fruity southern accent, and his name is Gay Jake? He sounds like the coolest guy ever. I have to meet him. I need to meet him. Jasmine and I both laughed at the idea that the actual mythical creature in the back of the car was so excited to meet Gay Jake. After that, it took about 10 minutes to get to the house. Going slow to keep from drawing any attention or anything. We pulled in at close to 11 o'clock, only to see Gay Jake's body lying in the middle of the driveway. Holy shit, is he okay? Milo yelled from the back as Tegan gasped in shock. He's fine, I said. That's just how he waits for company sometimes. Move, shithead! I yelled out of the window, laying on the car horn as I did. His arm popped up off the ground, middle finger proudly extended, a large grin cracking across his face. As he hoisted himself off the ground, I yelled again, I'll run your gay ass over. Well now isn't the carpet muncher calling the kettle black, he said, walking over to the open window. Y'all alright? You get here, okay? Yeah, sticking his head through the window to check everyone. Yeah, everyone else ought to be pulling up in a second. We really owe you for this one, Jake. Oh, honey, y'all don't owe me a damn thing. Now go on up and get parked and head inside. I'll make sure everybody else gets in all right. And help yourselves to anything in the kitchen. Y'all know where everything is. It ain't changed none. I love him. Milo whispered in my ear as we drove up the driveway to park. We all filed into the house, which was immaculate and well-decorated as always. Although through no doing of Gay Jake himself, just cause I like men don't mean I know what lamp goes with those curtains, he would say when someone asked if he did the decorating himself. We spread out as we entered through the back door and all found places to sit. All except for Milo, who made a beeline for the kitchen. So, how do you, or should I say, how does one end up a werewolf? Jasmine asked to break the silence. If it's okay to ask. Tegan got up out of her seat and sat down next to Jasmine, wrapping her arm around her shoulders and pulling her in close. Oh darling, you may ask me any questions you like. To be werewolf, you have to change the fluids with an already werewolf. Oh, so a bite? They have to bite you, Jasmine said. <coughs> Milo exaggerated from the entrance to the kitchen to get our attention. He shook his head, then held up both his hands, making a circle with his thumb and index finger with one, and extended the finger of one of his others before moving his extended finger in and out of the circle a few times. Once he was satisfied with our disgust, he retreated once again into the kitchen. Oh, oh my, Jasmine said, turning back towards Tegan, who had a firmly blushed expression on her face. So, did one of you, you know, the other? Yes, I met Milo when he came to my home of Romania on vacation. He had much more money back then. A gift from his grandfather when he died, I think. I made him werewolf when we came back here together. That sounds like a beautiful story. Oh, darling, it is. I must tell you all of it sometime. Tegan said as Joanna, Trey, Leslie, and Dex walked in from the back door, followed shortly by Gay Jake. What happened to tall, dark, and Manson you pulled in here with? Gay Jake asked as he made his way in, looking around at everyone. He's in the kitchen, I answered. 
All right, I'm gonna go get him in here, and y'all gonna tell me about whatever shit this is y'all got yourselves into, Gay Jake said before heading into the kitchen. I'd just begun to ask if they had noticed anything unusual on the way over, but before I could get my words out, I heard a racket in the kitchen. Milo came whipping around the corner with his arms up over his head, Gay Jake close behind yelling and swatting at him with a paper plate. Go on now, shoot, get, scat, I was saving that for later. Gay Jake screamed, continuing his paper plate barrage. He just take damn near everything in my refrigerator and sniffed out the damn cheeseburger I had in the microwave I just got before y'all got here. And I didn't get to eat it yet. He complained with visible distress. Milo ran across the room in an attempt to seek shelter from Gay Jake's fury. As he did, I noticed that unlike before, his once fairly average body now had pretty noticeable gut that jiggled as he ran. He can really put it away, I thought to myself. We'll go get you another cheeseburger, I reassured him in an attempt to rescue Milo, the werewolf. Once I got everything calmed down and everyone got situated in the living room, I began to explain the entirety of the situation to him. Gay Jake, never being the judgmental type, took the insanity of the story in stride, though he did have some well-founded disbelief. Nah, bullshit. I'm not going to sit here and have someone tell me that these two are some damn werewolves. He said, pointing in the direction of Milo and Tegan. And y'all want me to believe that y'all in some trouble with drug-dealing vampires because Hamburglar over there burned down their meth lab? Well, what the hell are you kids on? I know it sounds like the weirdest, craziest shit on earth, but it's true, Trey spoke up. Maybe if one of them could turn into a wolf, would that convince you? Okay, yeah. You get one of those to turn into a wolf in front of me, and I'll believe it. But didn't you hear them? Leslie interjected. They said they have to prepare and it takes time. They can't just... Yeah, I got this. Milo said, hopping up from his seat and rolling up his right sleeve to the shoulder. He held out his arm and started to strain and grunt as the muscle in his arm began to tighten. Slowly, they began to grow as the skin darkened, before long, thick, black hairs began to sprout and then suddenly... Snap! Pop! Crunch! His arm began to stretch along with his fingers. Shit! He shuddered at the first loud snap. He then clenched his jaw and grimaced as his right arm became unrecognizable to what it was moments ago. Come on, you fuckers. Almost there! He said to himself through gritted teeth as he flexed and shook the tips of his elongated fingers as the nightmarish claws began to protrude and pop away the fingernails that were growing out from under. As this went on, I was the only one who noticed that his newly obtained belly had been receding back to its normal size. Oh my god, are you okay? That looks like it hurt like a bitch! Gay Jake shouted as he ran to Milo's aid, whose face was now bright red and covered in sweat. His right arm now looked exactly as it did the night we met. And I do mean exactly. It was way out of proportion with his body, the tips of his claws just short of touching the floor. Once Gay Jake had a chance to take everything in, we began to get on the same page. He had always been one to stay calm and take things pretty well. But I don't think anyone expected him to just accept that a man grew a werewolf arm right in front of him. When I asked him how he managed to stay so cool in the situation, he replied with a sassy, Sweetheart, if I look this good and I'm still single, then anything is possible. After that, we sat and talked for hours in an attempt to formulate a plan. But like most people our age, we only managed to agree to put it off until later and focus on getting more food. It became apparent that we weren't going to get anywhere after Gay Jake spoke out mid-conversation. All right, look, you're going to have to do something with that, he exclaimed, pointing at Milo's grossly oversized wolf appendage. But you seemed so accepting of it earlier, Dex chimed in sarcastically. I was, and I am, Gay Jake argued back. But it still freaks me the fuck out. Keep thinking it's going to try and crawl towards me or something. Just, here, put this blanket over it. That morning, I went to the grocery store, accompanied by Dex and Lita, who'd been sleeping upstairs the night before. We also were in the company of Gay Jake's No Limit credit card and Leslie's van, so we could haul as much food as possible, not only to feed the troop of people currently kept down in the house, but to bulk up our two lycanthropic allies. It also turns out, to everyone's surprise, that Lita required absolutely no convincing that Milo and Tegan were werewolves, and that we're on a spun-out gang of vampires shit list. As it would happen, Lita already knew about all that shit. 
According to her, she was a licensed member of the American United Association of Certified Vampire Control Technicians, or AUACVCT for short. A whackvert, if you prefer. She'd become a member after meeting some guy during one of her usual anti-poaching assignments that suggested she might have the right stuff and showed her how to apply. Apparently, it's a lot less hush-hush and ceremonious than you'd think. So that means that she's not necessarily a full vampire hunter, but she's licensed by the government or something. I remember hearing a story about her one time. During one of her assignments with a tiger preservation organization, she saw a poacher about to kill a wild tiger. And since he hadn't noticed her yet, she just shot him in the ass with the rifle and let the tiger maul him to death in the middle of the jungle. This chick is the matron saint of fucks given. The fact that she ended up being an actual vampire hunter seriously made me wonder if we were all extremely lucky or extremely unlucky, as she was a very fortunate billion to one shot protection to a very unfortunate billion to one shot problem. A fortune teller would lose their shit if they tried to read my palm at this point. As we pulled into the Walmart parking lot, I wondered to myself if this wasn't possibly too much. After all, we still didn't have any indication that the people who ran the operation out of the shed were even after us, and definitely nothing to suggest that they were vampires. But my suspicions wouldn't last that long. After we finished our shopping and were headed back out to the van with two overloaded buggies apiece, the call of nature struck. Okay guys, I've got like Kentucky Derby levels of racehorse piss in my bladder, so I'm gonna run back real quick. It'll just take a sec. I said as I loaded my last bag into the vehicle. A second my ass, Dex complained. You got like the biggest bladder of anyone on earth. You're gonna be in there forever. Where do you even put it all? Pee is stored in the balls. I yelled back at him as I walked away, knowing how much he hated that saying. I heard his agitated ugh fade into the distance as I got close to the entrance. When I walked through the doors, I saw that the greeter had switched from the one who was there when we had first arrived. Where the first greeter was an older man, this one seemed to be like a middle-aged woman whose hair and makeup could only be described as, I'd like to speak to your manager. It only got worse as she greeted me in the most energetic, peppy voice. A morning person. I'd rather run right down the mouth of those bipedal meth mosquitoes than a morning person. I managed to grimace a smile and nod as I passed by and headed to the restrooms. On my way there, in one of the aisles, I passed a man in a hoodie who kept staring at me as I walked by. I decided that if he'd started following me, I'd call Lita and tell her to get her G.I. ass in here. But he stayed where he was, and I made it to the bathroom in one piece. I walked in and slipped into his stall to do my business. While I was in it, I thought I might have heard the door to a restroom open, but it was so quiet I figured it must have been the door to the men's room instead. Once I had finished bleeding the phantom lizard... I popped the latch on the stall and started to walk out, only to be impeded by the wide, smiling face of the morning person from the front of the store. Ugh, I thought. Excuse me, ma'am, I said, trying to step past her. But to my surprise, she put her hand against my chest and shoved me back into the stall, hard. My head bounced off the tile wall and my vision dotted and speckled as I fought to stay conscious. I came to my senses just as she'd leaned down to my face. I thought that was you. You're staying right here, sugar. She hummed in that same insufferably cheerful voice. I'm just going to call for a little help, and we're going to cart you off to torture you until you tell us where your little friends are. I'm not going fucking anywhere with you, I mumbled, still in a daze from the impact. You have to take me out of this bathroom, and the second you do, I'll pitch like a bitch like you can't imagine. You'll never make it out the door with me. <laughs> oh, sugar. You won't be doing a darn thing after I take just enough blood out of you not to kill you. Why, you won't even be able to stand on your own after I'm done. Now let me just get comfortable first, and She then started to lift me up off the floor and up against the stall partition. As fear and panic started to set in, I tried to scream, but she pressed her hand over my mouth so hard that I could taste blood from my lips. I kicked and screamed and punched, but nothing even seemed to bother her as I felt the hand on my mouth begin to push my head to one side to expose my neck. I watched in horror as her face aged 40 years in front of me. 
Her now bloodshot eyeballs seemed to bulge from their sockets as she opened her mouth and extended her tongue. At that point, her front teeth had began to retract upwards to reveal two large, sharp, triangular fangs that spanned the entirety of where all her original teeth should have been. After this, the top of her tongue began to split down the middle and blossom to open and expose two rows of tiny cactus-like spines, making a revolting suction sound as it did. She started to lean towards me, excitement gurgling from her open maw. I still couldn't pry myself from her grip despite my frantic struggles. Just as I felt her hot breath on my face, I slammed the point of my knife straight down into her exposed eye with every bit of strength I could muster. While she had been putting her game face on, I managed to get my hand under my shirt and free the knife from my waistband. I felt the tip hit bone and a grinding, scraping sensation as the blade slid across the back of the socket. I took my other hand and hammered it into the butt of the handle just to really sink it in. The knife was pulled from my grip as she snatched her head sideways, emitting a screech of agony as she hit the floor and began to flail. I didn't hesitate. I bolted from the stall and slammed into the locked door. Frantically trying to turn the latch, I finally managed to get it open and take off through the store. By the time I got to the van, Lita was in the driver's seat facing Dex in the back. I opened the passenger door and got in as fast as possible. See, I told you it would take forever. We've been here for like 15 minutes and Lita keeps doing that thing where she keeps saying, I must break you, in Dolph Lugerin's voice and she knows it freaks me out. Dex griped as I sat down. It's not my fault he's a put. Hey, are you okay? Nina said once she turned to look at me and saw that sweat was running down my face and the blood dripping out of my mouth. Before I could collect my thoughts to answer, broken glass exploded into the cab from the driver's side window. Morning bitch must have gone out a back door, circled round and dived through the window after us. It took Lita a second to orientate herself, but once she did, oh boy, oh boy. Operation Oh Hell No went into full effect. Lita grabbed the handle of my knife that was sticking out of her eye socket to hold her head in place and started raining down elbows on her temple like it was what all the cool kids were doing. Every blow bouncing morning bitch's head off the steering wheel, causing the horn to bark over the sound of decks freaking the absolute fuck out in the back. Lita continued the onslaught until the blade finally slipped loose of her head, allowing her to slide out of the window and onto the pavement. As soon as we heard the dull thud of her body crumple to the ground, Lita fired up the engine and peeled out of the parking lot as fast as she could. Are you okay? She asked once again, glancing back and forth from the road to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I answered, looking down at my hand when I felt a warm, stinging sensation in my palm. A deep gash ran through the center of my palm. My hand must have slid down onto the edge when I stabbed her. As I looked, I noticed a few thin black lines sneaking their way around peeking out from under the flowing blood as they headed down my wrist towards my arm. Sliding my hand into my pocket, I reassured her. I'm fine. Everything's fine. 